I'm Doug Courier. Ever since Senorita Death, the chapbook, um, Death has pretty much captivated my work. The new collection, Death Studies, coming out this fall, uh, is pretty much a, a continuation of that sort of fascination I have. I'd like to read you a few poems from that manuscript today. The first one's entitled, what death sounds like. I have a pretty good idea what my death will sound like. A chuckle, a snicker, a chortle. A little affectionate, a little impatient. As if to say, silly, you thought I might be late. I'm never late for Yankees like you. You're halting Spanish and travels. Fool no one, you'll die a gringo. All the while, her finely tapered fingers will tap out a slow asynchrony, a reluctant beating, that halting rhythm of my loyal and battered heart. This next one, I do fly a couple times a year, and I always think when I'm waiting for the plane about what everyone else thinks about, I suppose. This was entitled Death in Flight. Death is that cute stewardess, loves the uniform, and handing out bottled water to passengers whose mouths go suddenly dry at takeoff and landing. Chicken or pasta, red wine or white, nuts or cookies, food to take their minds off the fact that they are hurtling through the air, defying gravity in a metal coffin on fire. And in the improbable event of a water landing, there's a life jacket under the seat. Of course, this time of year, no one survives more than an hour in the water. She likes showing people the exits, talking about the inflatable ramps that become life rafts. She likes showing folks the life vests, how they're deployed, likes working the demonstration seatbelt, the overhead oxygen masks. She knows from experience, first sign of trouble, they'll forget everything in mortal fear become a plane load of panicked sheep, agreeing to that when they came on board and putting themselves in the hands of an unlikely dubious physics. This next one is entitled Death at Lunch. I like imagining I am getting to know death. She's quiet today, plays with her food, pushing it around the plate as if she's not hungry. She's always hungry. I'd ask, but she wouldn't tell me what has her pensive and quiet. Could be anything. New miracle cure, some expensive drug going generic, airbags had her depressed for a week. War on cancer, that addict thing, naloxone, was a real downer. I'd ask, but she'll be all right. Eternal optimist, she'll shake her head, shake it off. All that mortal foolishness, all that misguided hope, all that desperate damn silliness. I'll wrap it up with one that I, one where I, I indicate that I've kind of changed my mind over the years about what sort of death I would prefer. It's called Over the Years. I've changed my mind. A good death is one I can see coming from a ways off, looking, at, looking for me as if I'm the only one in the room, like a torch singer crooning me my last drink or a really good stripper as unhurried as winter. I was a fan of sudden, something overnight, just long enough for bits and pieces of life to flash before my eyes like birds on fire speed and noise and light switched off, violent and fast, all about not suffering, not having time to cling and hurt. But now, I think I'd like to watch her approach, thank her for her time, the ride, the whole damn journey, ups and downs now equally sweet. That's what it comes down to really, the time it takes for life to become a life. Thank you very much.
Thank you.